Edmonton Public School Board trustees have just voted to ask the government to phase out funding for private schools in Alberta because of course they did. Private schools make public education look bad because they do more with less and still see better outcomes. Eight of nine Edmonton Public School Board trustees voted in favor of a motion to lobby the government to end public dollars being spent on private education. Now the board says it will send a letter to NDP Education Minister David Egan asking the ministry to cease funding private schools. And some of the arguments coming out of that school board meeting are straight out of the Justin Trudeau playbook, sounding nearly identical to the Liberals' excuses for making Christian organizations sign an attestation of liberal values before they could get access to a summer jobs grant. Some trustees expressed concerns that Christian schools might teach things they may not agree with and therefore should have to toe the NDP line to get access to public funds. The school board's vote was in response to a draft policy published last year by the United Conservative Party. The motion is basically a political show of loyalty to the NDP government, renouncing the UCP draft policy that suggested the Alberta government should ensure equal per student funding, regardless of school choice, basically allowing education funding to follow the student and be used wherever the family sees fit and not the government in either public, separate, charter, private or homeschooling options. Now this is where the facts just blow up the narrative when you dig a little deeper. Yes, in Alberta we do fund independent schools at 60 to 70 percent of the per pupil grant provided by the government to public schools. It's our answer to a voucher program, a way to eliminate socioeconomic barriers to school choice. It is something you'd think progressives themselves could get behind. To look at this another way, if parents choose to opt for private education by keeping their children out of the public education system, these parents are saving the province 30 to 40 percent per child. As one dissenting school board trustee, Sherry Adams, pointed out, Independent schools make up 5% of school enrollment, but only get access to 2% of funding. The school board trustee who tabled this gross motion, Tricia Esterbrooks, claims ending funding for alternative education doesn't remove choice for families. She says now the choice for those families is to pay a little bit extra money for tuition or send their child to a publicly funded public school. Sorry, trustee Tricia. It doesn't work that way. It does remove the choice if those families can't afford to pay the full tuition at a private school. I'm assuming Tricia Estabrooks thinks that people who use private education in Alberta are the wealthy. Let's just debunk that myth here, shall we? According to a Fraser Institute study of family incomes, when they remove the families with children attending elite level independent schools from the study, Families with children enrolled in independent schools had an income of $95,549 per year, which is actually 1.8% less than the average income for families with children attending public schools. So, it's not the wealthy exercising school choice in Alberta. It's actually people who earn a little bit less, but want a lot more for their kids. And what if some of these families can't afford to pay a little bit more, like Trisha Estabrooks just assumes they can? What choice do they have then? I guess they're off to one of Trisha's underachieving, overfunded, cookie-cutter feel-gooderies. Best of luck, kids. You're going to need it. The only thing the public system overachieves at is think-alike authoritarianism. And the school board has some very powerful anti-school choice allies in some very high places here in Alberta. In fact, here's what Premier Rachel Notley thinks of school choice that our education and the public nature of our education system is, is fundamentally important. Government dollars should not be going into private schools. They should be going into public schools. And so we would restructure funding that way because we need to encourage more participation in our public education system, not less. The logic of the school board is really hard to follow. I'd even suggest it's completely non-existent. In an op-ed in the Edmonton Journal written by economist Mark Milkey, he ran the numbers to show that private and independent schools actually save the government $750 million a year. 
That's money the government can reinvest in public education if they wanted to. In their attempt to protect public education, the trustees are demanding the government dump more students into a more expensive system the trustees already say is overburdened and underfunded, and they're doing it in a way that actually takes three quarters of a billion dollars away from public education. The school board's attempt to make education more fair is taking away the choice of some families to choose the school that best suits their unique child's needs. Parents know their children best. Parents know exactly what their children need. The public school board trustees shouldn't just presume they know better than these kids' own parents. If these public school board trustees actually cared about better outcomes for kids with unique and diverse needs, they would be advocating for the most diverse form of education system possible with the greatest amount of school choice. Now, there are many reasons that parents in Alberta are increasingly choosing alternative forms of education for their children outside of the public school system. It's better outcomes, it's better programming, there are schools tailored to fit individual needs, religious or otherwise, it's because parents want to, and that should be good enough for the government. And maybe, just maybe, some parents don't want to send their kids to be educated by a bunch of people who have willingly allowed themselves to be brainwashed by the likes of anti-pipeline ignorance of David Suzuki. It should be a free marketplace of ideas when it comes to education. The more, the merrier. And competition should make everyone better. But maybe that's the problem with the public school board's trustees. They don't want the competition making them look bad and inefficient. Instead of addressing the bleeding of pupils from public schools to another system, instead of trying to make their own system better and more appealing and more attractive to those families that are leaving, the public system would rather just strip away parental autonomy to decide what's best for their kids. I mean, let's be real here, the public system has 30 to 40 percent more funding per child. Shouldn't they really be 30 to 40 percent better? Isn't that a question we should be asking? Is this not a question the government themselves should be asking? What is the public system doing with that extra money, or rather not doing with all that extra money? And let's remember, it's the government's job to administer the education system, but it is not their job to tell parents what it should look like. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. Are you like me? Are you always on your phone? It is a blessing and a curse. But it's good to have a way to debunk the mainstream media right in the palm of your hand, which is why I have good news for you. We have a brand new Rebel Media app. It's available on the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Download it, give it a whirl, and take the other side of the story with you wherever you go.